Jakob's piece of the DNA wall is just an amazing commission because it's so adventuresome, it took him years. When I was given the commission, I was obviously <laughs> totally overjoyed and, and couldn't quite believe it for a long time, but then realizing actually, my God, I've actually got to make what I've suggested. The world's greatest collectors are not only defined by great wealth. Sotheby's takes you inside Chatsworth House, the ancestral home of the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. Discover the passion that has driven 16 generations of the Cavendish family to create one of the world's most extraordinary art collections. The DNA wall is a quite large ceramic installation devised by a brilliant ceramic artist called Jakob van der Burgel at our request. It was a site-specific commission. The idea I came up with was to produce five portraits of the mitochondrial DNA of a Duke and Duchess of Devonshire, their son, their daughter-in-law, and then something I call the Everyman Portrait. What I wanted to create was something that tied the beautiful portraits of artists like Gainsborough, Rembrandt, Reynolds, Sargent, and really find a contemporary way of dealing with ancestry and inheritance. The center bit is for everybody's DNA, and it's got tiny little mirrors of different height, so different people can look at themselves. The North Sketch sequence is comprised of 660 ceramic panels, all made by hand. Within those panels, you have about 6,000 handmade ceramic blocks that denote or translate the mitochondrial DNA. Each block is totally unique. It's scored and then cracked open so that each texture is totally unique. And that's all about the fact that everyone is unique. The brief that I was given for the commission was to produce architectural ceramics for a new gallery that was being created within Chatsworth House, and that really was it. The first time I heard about it, I thought it was a wonderful idea, and then I saw the initial designs, I thought, is that a little harsh? But the more I talked to him about it, the more impressed I was with the way that he had thought about the collection physically, where it's located in the building. It's been very important for me to make the work fit in effortlessly with the old and a lot of attention has been paid to the building. You get the Freuds with the oil portraits and then you're moving into a ceramic space which is a continuation of portraiture but just in a different format and then you get through that space and then you go into the top of the oak stairs where you've got oil paintings dating back into the 1600s. It's brought great life back to this part of the house and with the DNA aspect is intrinsic to the house and the family and will be forevermore. There really is something here in the DNA of the Cavendish family, I think, in terms of kind of working with the right avant-garde artists and being truly innovative in the process. It's interesting to compare how the current Duke relinquished control over the shape or form of the DNA wall in the same way that the Sixth Duke relinquished control over the commission to Canova to create the sleeping endymion. He didn't know that that was what he was going to get. The Sixth Duke was a great collector, but he also loved commissioning things. And his greatest passion was uh, statutory contemporary sculpture. And through his stepmother, he got to know Canova. Canova was probably the most famous artist of his generation. The Bachelor Duke visited the studio in 1819. He said to Canova, look, here's a sum of money. I want you to make me something really beautiful. You decide, and I'm completely in your hand, which is the perfect thing to do. But you need to have an artist who's going to respond in a good way. The Duke was obviously a passionate collector of contemporary sculpture. And the extraordinary thing about the sculpture gallery itself is there is no classical antiquity in that space. It is all contemporary sculpture. So he was buying art by living artists with whom he had direct and personal relationships. There's an absolute truth that if a patron gives 
an artist a brief with no limits and allows that artist to get on with what he wants, the creative output is going to be far superior. I think it's really wrong to interfere too much with the commission. If you ask an artist to make something, you don't then tell him how to do it. You need to have complete confidence. And of course, sometimes it's going to be not what you want. But in this case, we had no idea what we wanted, but we got something we absolutely love. I hope that Jacob is really excited by his installation here, because he can't have known at the beginning exactly how he was going to finish. I like to think that Canova was really excited when he finished the Sleeping Endymion, because he must have known in his heart that it was a wonderful piece of work, and it sort of wouldn't happen without the patrons.